Good day and welcome back to Ed's Garage at Merton Hyundai. Today we have finally the 2022 Santa Fe Luxury plug-in hybrid. Yes, we finally got a plug-in hybrid SUV. Uh, so this vehicle, guys, awesome. It is going to blow your mind with the features that it comes with. But what's really nice about it, of course, is the fact that it's a plug-in hybrid. Now, if you haven't already seen my Santa Fe Luxury Hybrid video, I invite you to check that out. It's in the uh, comment section or in the description section below. But it goes in a little bit more into detail uh, with regards to some of the features. But this will still be a detailed video. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to start at the front of the vehicle. Now, this being the plug-in hybrid, it actually isn't really any different on the outside as the uh, to the luxury hybrid, the regular uh, luxury hybrid. However, it's got a bigger battery, it's got a bigger motor, it's got more power, and of course it's gonna cost you a lot less at the pump. So under the hood of this vehicle, you've got that 1.6 liter turbocharged uh, engine. On top of that, you've got a 90 horsepower electric motor. Combined, it's 260 horsepower, so it's actually a lot quicker than the regular luxury hybrid. But on top of that, you've got a six-speed automatic transmission. It's not a CVT, so you don't have to worry about you know issues with towing because this will still tow a respectable 2,000 pounds. Now, as far as the rest of the front end features, you can see we've got the same LED reflective headlights as the regular luxury hybrid. We've got the same grill, the big, bold, beautiful silver grill. Actually stands out really, really, really nicely. Uh, we've got the forward-facing radar system for the adaptive cruise and autonomous emergency braking system. Up in the windshield, you can see we have the little camera right about there. That is also for the forward autonomous braking system, as well as the lane keep assist. Uh, and highway follow assist. Right next to that, you can see we've got the sensor for the automatic wipers. We do have automatic wipers on this vehicle. Looking down at the corners, you can see we've got the um, uh, air curtain pass-through, which of course creates that curtain of air over the wheels to reduce aerodynamic drag. And speaking of wheels on this one, you've got the 18, or sorry, 19 inch aluminum alloy wheels. Now these are uh, wrapped in uh, cross continental. So this is the uh, same set of wheels and tires that you'd see on the other uh, luxury hybrid, the non-plug-in hybrid, as well as the trend uh, plug-in hybrid and regular hybrid. As a matter of fact, the same wheels as what you'd find on the calligraphy trim for 2021. Looking further down the vehicle, you can see we've got the, uh, the marker lights on the mirrors. You've got blind spot monitoring in there. You've got proximity entry. There is also a light that lights up in here as you approach the vehicle at night, which is kind of nice. And then coming around to the back of the vehicle, one of my favorite aspects of the vehicle is the smart lift gate system. So all you got to do is stand there patiently for a few seconds and the tailgate opens up. Inside the trunk, well over a thousand liters of space here until you fold the seats down and then you get well over 2,000 liters of space. So lots of space. Uh, now this one does come with a level one charger. Uh, so anyone can purchase this, take it home right away and start using it. As you can see, it's the same charger that comes with our EVs and our other plug-in hybrids. Underneath the floor, you have the grocery organizer. So you just kind of roll that up. You see we've got lots of space in there as well. That does come out if you need extra room. Uh, so you can actually take this whole thing right out and just have a big open space down there. It's kind of nice. Now Hyundai's been really clever with this uh, charger pouch actually. It's got Velcro on the bottom. So if you do have it sitting in the back, it's not going to slide around. However, it also fits perfectly in there. So again, always thinking, always improving. Pretty cool. You've also got some underfloor storage here, but it's a very tiny amount right in the corner there because this is actually where your DC battery is. And then over here, you've got the jack. It does still have a spare tire underneath on this particular one. And of course, to close the tailgate, you have the button up here, but I'd like to demonstrate as somebody who is six foot one and a bit. Uh, I used to be six foot two. I've lost some height somehow, uh, but you'll notice even at six foot two, I'd be able to stand under this tailgate. And that's not actually super common. You'll find that a lot of car companies have a lower tailgate um, and you'd be banging your head into them if you were, you know, as tall as I am. So pretty nice. You can just press the button there to close it and check this out. 
it stops and opens up. So it's got an anti-pinch protection. So no matter how far down it is, even way down here, if you get your arm caught in there, if you're a child or whatever, it won't actually continue to close. It'll emergency lift open for you. All right, let's check out under the hood. Now, like other Santa Fe's, of course, Hyundai makes it nice and easy to get under the hood. It's basically just a latch slightly to the right of center. And then, of course, the hood is held open by struts. Lots of sound deadening in here, which you will notice on the test drive. I'll try to remember to talk about it, but you've got the soundproofing insulation up here. You've got sound insulation and, of course, fire insulation along the firewall. And even on the sides here, you've got these plastic coverings. All of that kind of helps to reduce wind noise and road noise. Also, what you'll see under here is the extensive use of structural adhesive. So this particular vehicle uses several hundred feet of structural adhesive, which is actually up to 10 times more than the competition. That increases the strength of these welded components. It also allows Hyundai to use multiple materials together that ordinarily wouldn't be you know, able to be adhered together. Uh, heavily used in the airline industry to hold airplanes up in the sky, so you know what, it's probably a good thing. Under here, of course, we have the hybrid smart stream technology engine. So it's a 1.6 liter, as I mentioned before. Uh, the electric motors on this side underneath the uh, uh, charge controller management, all that stuff, the battery temperature management system, everything is located on this side for the electric com electrical components. And underneath it is the transmission, a 1.6 liter automatic. All right, let's try out the back seat first. Now I've got the front seat I'm going to place the front seat where I would actually sit when I'm driving. And the reason I need to place it is because it has that valet seating thing. So it actually moves backwards when you shut the car off. So we're going to put it where I would drive it. There we go. And now we'll jump into the back seat right away so you can see that I'm not playing around. <laughs> this one actually has an immense amount of back seat legroom and headroom. So let's jump in here. Okay, so there we go. So as you can see, I've got tons of headroom, even though this one is equipped with the huge panoramic sunroof, which is standard in all Santa Fe hybrids and plug-in hybrids, by the way. Um, nice headliner. You've got uh, grab handles, all four corners, little lights in there. They are LED lights as well. The seat backs themselves are solid. You've got seat pouches in both of the seat backs. My feet can slide well underneath the seat to make it even more comfortable. And as you can see, I've got tons of leg room, uh, knee room here. And I've also got access to a couple, of, uh, a couple of vents here and two USB ports as well. And for even more back seat customers uh, comfort, we have also heated seats back here and sunshades. Now, in regards to the seat itself, it's a nice soft seat. You've got a center cup holder armrest. It's also cushioned. So not only is this armrest cushioned, but the center one's cushioned. And of course, this one does recline. There's actually a, somewhere around 10 to 13 spots that it'll stop. It's uh, pretty amazing where you can put these seats. Now, most companies only give you a couple of spots of recline. This one gives you multiple different places you can adjust to. All right, let's check out the front seat. All right, now before I jump in, I also want to point out we do have remote start in this vehicle. So hit the lock button and then hold down the remote start button until the lights flash. And there we go, it has started. Now, because this is a hybrid, the gas engine hasn't started, just the electric motor and the accessories have started. Now, if we go up to the door, it is still locked. So I press the button on the door handle to open it up. And there we go. Now, one of the really cool things with these vehicles, with all Hyundai vehicles now that have remote start, is when you get in, you just put your foot on the brake and everything comes to life. You don't actually need to start it again. It just, yeah, it's pretty cool. All right, let's go over all of the features on this Santa Fe hybrid, plug-in hybrid luxury trim. All right, so on the left-hand side here, you can see we've got the lane keep assist, which I'll show you on the test drive. Uh, we have the emergency brake here. Now it is an automatic emergency brake, so it will shut itself off automatically when you put the vehicle into drive. Uh, we have up on the left side of the door, you can see we've got the, the um, uh, memory seating and mirrors. So you got two positions for memory seating and mirrors. And of course that also includes uh, dashboard illumination and a couple other things. Now, before I forget, on the door, you'll notice here we've got this cool little pattern over the speaker grill. Um, this is just factory stock stereo. It's a six speaker system. It's not a Bose system like you would get in the very top trim. Um, so keep that in mind. Somebody had asked me on one of my other videos um, and actually 
it's kind of funny because they didn't really ask me. They just complained that I didn't mention it. <laughs> so, so I'm mentioning it now just for you. Um, also, another thing that uh, somebody had recently commented on was how could I possibly like the push button transmission? So before I get too far into everything else, I'm going to show you why I love the push button transmission. So let's do this. I'm going to put my seatbelt on. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put it into drive. So let's zoom in a little bit here. You can see that currently the emergency brake is on and we're in park. Now, when I put it into drive, watch what happens to the emergency brake when I press the gas, when I press the accelerator, boom. Emergency brake is now off. Okay, I gotta make sure I don't bang into these cars in front of me here. But now the cool thing, I'm gonna zoom back out again. The cool thing aside from that with this transmission setup is I'm gonna leave it in drive. I'm gonna take my seatbelt off, okay? Now I'm gonna open my door and I'm gonna get out. Now we're still in drive, check it out. You can see the D right in the center there, right, right there, okay? But watch what happens when I open my door. Now I'm holding my camera with my right hand. I'm opening the door with my left hand. I'm taking my foot off the brake and look at that, we're now in park, okay? So how cool of a safety feature is that? The car will automatically shift to park if you forget so that you don't inadvertently have the car roll away or drive away on you. You can't do that with mechanical shift linkage. So how would you not like or prefer this? Let's do a multi-point turn, okay? Put my seatbelt on again here. Okay, here we go. I'm doing, doing this with my left hand, okay? Drive, reverse, drive, reverse. Way easier. <laughs> Now also if I put the vehicle, if I shut the vehicle off, it will also quickly snap into park, which is pretty cool. Lastly, the other cool thing about having the transmission set up like this is because there's no shift linkage, we now have a ton of storage space down here. So I've got on the left hand side, a 12 volt power outlet. And on the right hand side, I have a USB port for a passenger to charge their phone and a rather large spot here that I can put stuff. So those different features combined are why I like the push button transmission. Now, I don't like the knob one because with the knob, you're still kind of turning to a specific setting. Now, I, I know some of the newer vehicles now, you kind of move the knob three times or whatever to put it, but this honestly, it just makes sense. There's no reason to have shift linkage and a shift stick anymore. There just, there just isn't. Um, so once you have this and you've used it for a few years, trust me, you will start to like it. It is the better way to go. All right, let's check out some of the other features here before I get uh, too carried away with that. Um, so on the left-hand side here, you can see we've got the lockout for the child safety locks on the rear doors as well as the rear windows, but it is equipped with safe exit assist. So if you're parallel parked and there's a car coming down the side, it'll actually keep the rear doors locked until that car has safely passed by. You'll also get a notification on the instrument cluster. So the driver and the passenger will know, you know, not to open up the doors uh, regardless of what side you're parked on. So pretty cool technology, good safe uh, good thinking from Hyundai Canada, or from Hyundai in general, Hyundai Canada. Wow, I'm so used to saying Hyundai Canada. All right, on the left-hand side here of the console, we have a wireless charger. It's a high wattage charger. It'll ch actually wirelessly charge your phone very, very quick. And you'll notice it's actually got little, I don't know if you can see that, little uh, divots in there because it is actually cooled. Uh, so it's one of the fastest wireless chargers in the industry and it's built into the car. Uh, you can see we've got the uh, Qi wireless charging logo right here. So that light comes on when you, when you put your phone down there. You've also got a USB port here, which is covered up uh, when you're not using it, but that's for um, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, playing music from a cell phone, that sort of thing. Uh, a couple of cup holders here. You've got a very large storage console. As you can see, I can kind of make that thing disappear altogether, but it uh, normally sits right there. And then further up, you've got your ventilated seats, your heated seats, uh, your all of your drive controls. So you've got the H, EV, and EV buttons. So that allows you to switch between full EV mode or just regular hybrid mode. Now, full EV mode doesn't mean that the gas engine will never come on, but it means that it'll very rarely come on. Uh, I've got the auto hold button here, which of course holds the vehicle in place when you take your foot off the brake, if you don't want it to creep forwards or backwards. Uh, you got your heated steering wheel, so a full 360 degree heated steering wheel. 
you got your different drive modes. Now what's cool about these drive modes is they also will change the display. So check this out. So here's sport mode, there's smart mode. And then if I put it into one of the uh, terrain modes, it doesn't actually change the display, um, but you can see snow, mud, and sand. So eco mode, of course, is gonna be the most economical and most sluggish. Sport mode is gonna use the most gas, but give you the most power. It also tightens up the steering wheel. Smart mode looks at how you're driving and adjusts accordingly. Snow mode, mud no mode, and sand mode, those three, what they do is they actually lock the center differential. So I love talking about the all-wheel drive system because it was designed and engineered right here in Canada by a company called Magna International very, very large uh, automotive um, parts and technologies manufacturer uh, from originally from Austria, but they've got a huge uh, factory here in Canada as well. But anyway, it's a predictive system. And when you put the vehicle into snow, mud or sand mode, not only is it predicting upcoming things, but it's also locking the center differential, giving you a split of power front and rear. So if both of your front wheels are slipping, it's not an issue because it's able to actually lock in power to the rear and vice versa. The predictive part of it works in any mode. And what that is, is under any sort of acceleration, it's putting power to the front wheels and the rear wheels all the time to prevent the, you know, the possibility of the front wheels slipping, where a lot of companies will wait for the front wheels to slip and then jam power to the rear wheels or vice versa. This one actually puts power to all four wheels right away under any sort of acceleration. Very, very, very good all wheel drive system. One of the best in the business. Looking over to the right, we can see we've got the hill descent assist, which I will show you on the test drive. We've got the backup sensors where you can turn them off. This one here is to actually enable the backup camera when you're at a standstill. And I'll show you real quick what the back backup camera looks like. Nice clear image. Um, you can actually adjust the view so that it's down over the bumper. So when you're lining up a trailer or whatever, let me just put the car in reverse here and you can see we've got the dynamic steering lines. Um, and then if we have the other view, it's dynamic steering lines down over the bumper, which is pretty cool. Now, while we've got, oh, put it back in the park, while we've got this display up, uh, one thing I'd like to point out is it's a non-polarized screen, which means you can see that screen even while wearing polarized sunglasses. Uh, again, another you know thing that not a lot of companies do. So when you're wearing polarized sunglasses, you can still see what's on that screen. Looking up a little bit further, we've got the automatic dual zone climate control and check this out. We have multiple layers of automatic. So I don't know if you can hear this, but if I put it on three, the fans spin up a little faster and then we got level two, level one. So it is going to automatically get to the temperature that you set it to, but it'll do it faster in level three and level two than it will in level one, obviously. Now we've got a driver only mode, which actually shuts off the entire right hand side of the car. So if you're trying to save a little bit of extra energy, try to go a little further on that uh, EV mode, you can actually shut off the climate control on the passenger side. Looking all the way up to the roof line, you can see we've got Blue Link. So Blue Link is free for three years. So you get five year, 100,000 kilometer warranty on most of the car's components, three years of free, free Blue Link, and eight years and 160,000 kilometers on the battery and the electric drive components. Great warranty in Canada, even better down in the States, but honestly, it's a great warranty. All right, looking up at the buttons again here, so you can see we've also got the controls for the big, beautiful, largest in class panoramic sunroof. And of course, it has that automatic sunshade. And check this out, the roof itself actually opens up quite large. Check it out. There we go. So that's where it stops. So the rear passenger still get all that extra light and the front passenger takes advantage of that nice open air experience. You've got an auto dimming rear view mirror with the home link buttons on the bottom. So that's for garage doors and gates. And both of the visors do slide out. They both have mirrors and they both have lights. Now in regards to the screen, it's an eight inch touch screen. It's a matte finish. So it doesn't actually have too much issues with reflections. Um, there's lots of functionality here, including wireless Android Auto and wireless CarPlay. So if you have a cell phone that's capable of wireless CarPlay and Android Auto, you do get that on this vehicle for free. Uh, you, of course, you do have Blue Link as well, which I mentioned a moment ago, you, which includes the valet mode, notifications from Blue Link, uh, that sort of thing. Valet mode just kind of restricts some of the vehicle's abilities. Quiet mode will shut down the rear speakers and limit the front speakers to lower volume. 
And then in here you can see we've got access to the climate screen if you want to see exactly what's going on with the climate control system. You've got access to the plug-in hybrid vehicle screen. So here you can see we have currently 61%. I'm going to charge it up to full before the test drive. Um, but it actually shows me how far we can go on that particular uh, range. So 23 kilometers of range on 61% of battery. Not bad. We expect to see about 50 kilometers of range. Now you can also go to charge management and change when the vehicle actually charges. So if you don't want it to charge at specific times of the day, you can do so. Uh, you can even change the AC charger current. So if you want, um, if you have an older plug-in at home that you're worried about blowing breakers on, you can actually reduce how much uh, electricity it actually pulls to charge. Pretty cool. Uh, in the eco driving screen, you can see a sort of a history of how the vehicle has been driven. Uh, you can also get an energy flow um, showing you exactly where energy is coming from and going to. All right, so that's pretty much it that I'll talk about on this screen. If you'd like to get a little bit more in depth on that screen, check out the uh, in the description below. Like I mentioned before, I have a link to the Santa Fe Luxury Hybrid um, uh, review that I've done and it's basically exactly the same on the inside and I go into a little bit more detail on everything so all right I think it's uh, time to plug this car in and go for a test drive so let's do that next okay so here we go we're about to drive the plug-in hybrid santa fe so i've got it charged up to it says 99 percent electric range 47 kilometers of course keep in mind your mileage may vary of course uh, in warmer temperatures we can expect to see a little bit of a higher range colder temperatures uh, a little bit lower range uh, well potentially significantly lower range if it's really cold uh, but we're going to see how it does, and I'm going to monitor what sort of fuel economy we're getting. I put it into hybrid mode. Of course, we have the EV um, hybrid, or sorry, electric mode. We have the EV hybrid mode switch. Um, so it is now in electric mode. So let's see what happens. So right now the engine is running. I'm guessing it's because the climate control system is on. Um, so I'll let you guys know as soon as it switches to EV mode, which should be pretty quick. All right, so we are now in EV mode. I'm gonna to try to keep it in EV as long as possible. Um, I don't know if you can see the mode where it says EV right here on the instrument cluster, but I'm gonna to try to keep it in there as much as possible. So I think it was just that initial because I was going through the different options. It didn't select EV right away. It takes a little bit, I guess, to you know, finally decide, okay, we're going to keep it in EV now. So um, it was only about maybe one minute that it had the engine running. All right. So of course this one is equipped, as I mentioned earlier, with the adaptive cruise and the lane follow assist. Um, so as you can see, it's doing a really nice job slowing down for the vehicle in front of us and keeping its position in the lines. All right, so coming up onto the freeway here, we're gonna see if we can keep it in EV mode the entire time while getting it up to speed. And there we go, the, uh, the gas engine did come on for a second. I actually pushed the gas down a little bit harder than I needed to, uh, and it flipped the gas engine on. So I've gotta keep an eye on the, the right-hand side of the instrument cluster and keep it sort of out of the power section in order to keep it all EV. So we're now doing about 90 kilometers an hour and we're gonna get up to 100. All right, still in EV mode at 110. And okay, now the gas engines come on at just over 110 kilometers an hour. So let's slow it back down here. Okay, so in EV mode, it looks like anything over 110 is going to get the engine to come back on. I'm gonna to try to creep up with the um, with cruise control here. Let's see what we can see. So currently doing 110 and the gas engine has come on. So I'm gonna drop it down. Okay, gas engine's off again. 
110, gas engine's back on. Okay, so I think it's safe to say that you can pretty successfully drive in EV mode up to about 110 kilometers an hour. Beyond that, it's going to use the gas engine. The gas engine is currently on, as you can see on the graphic here, it's showing that power is going to the battery. So I'm gonna drop it back down, and there we go, it actually just shut off again. I did not back it off, uh, but the car in front of me slowed down. So we came down to 105 kilometers an hour, and boom, we're right back into EV mode. So I'm gonna stick it at 109 kilometers an hour and uh, see what happens here. Currently we're reading 2.2 liters per 100 kilometers. I've got the AC on. Uh, set to 22 degrees and I've also got my ventilated seat on maximum yeah so the gas engine is still coming on and we are in EV mode and you can see the vehicle is doing a lot of the steering for us which is pretty cool Okay, I'm going to drop it down to 105 because the gas engine did come back on again. And I am driving in eco mode right now, guys. Um, it's back to EV only at the moment. So now I've set the max speed to 105. Uh, however, the vehicles in front of us aren't actually going any faster than 96, so I've got a turnoff to take here in a moment. So it appears as though most of your driving is going to be in EV mode on the freeway. However, uh, when you are accelerating on the freeway, at, you know, you're already doing 100 kilometers an hour. Anytime you're accelerating, uh, not any time, but often when you accelerate, it's going to actually kick in the gas engine as well. Uh, but most of this sort of cruising down the road like we are right now still will be on EV. And from what I understand, it can actually do speeds of up to 120 on straight EV mode. Um, however, as you're accelerating to that, chances are it's going to run the gas engine as well. So keeping it on EV mode here, just trying to... And this is tough for me because I really like to floor it everywhere. <laughs> so I'm trying to drive sort of a more relaxed pace, more a uh, little bit more, you know, controlled, uh, trying to keep the, the gas engine shut off. I'm down to two liters per 100 kilometers now. We have 37 kilometers left of range. And we've driven 12 kilometers. So 37 and 12 so I think we started off with it saying that um, that we had about 47 kilometers. It's got more, more range than it expected us to have, which is good. All right, I'm going to do a quick uh, 0 to 60 here. It's really quiet. There's no cars anywhere. So I'm going to come to a stop. And we're going to put it into sport mode and see what kind of time we get. All right, 3, 2, 1, go. And boom, there's 100. All right, so if any of you are curious to know what sort of um, 0 to 60 miles an hour, 0 to 100 kilometers an hour we got, uh, feel free to check the timestamps on the video. I'll try to do that for you as well. Now, as far as how the vehicle drives, the quietness and whatnot, it's actually, I mean, just like the other Santa Fe's, just like the Santa Fe Luxury Hybrid, um, of course, this being the plug-in hybrid, we do have a Santa Fe Luxury regular hybrid as well. Uh, but like those other vehicles, this one is very, very quiet inside. Um, I've had people compare it to, uh, to BMWs and Mercedes for how quiet it is. It really, really does uh, kind of soak up the noise, the road noise, the wind noise. What a beautiful area this is. Handling is quite good. Now, of course, we have a little bit of extra weight in this vehicle from that bigger battery. However, it doesn't seem to be affecting the handling at all. I mean, it rolls around some of these corners, of course. I mean, it's still a mid-size SUV. It's not a sports car. Um, but you can probably hear stuff sloshing around. I've got a couple things here in the back, uh, and they're kind of moving around a little bit. But as far as these bumps go, man, it is silky smooth. I think the extra weight of that battery is actually helping it over a lot of these bumps. Compared to the luxury, the regular luxury hybrid, I would say that this is a touch smoother. 
uh, has the exact same, exactly the same wheels, uh, same tires, the um, uh, cross continentals. Yeah, the handling is superb. And it's staying very flat, very, very controlled. Absolutely no problems whatsoever. So yeah, well, you know, we're getting ridiculously good fuel economy, 2.4 liters per 100 kilometers. I'm still able to get up to speed really quickly with that combined 260 horsepower, um, 90 of which is coming from the electric motor. So good down low torque, great lateral support in these seats as well. They're actually very, very nicely bolstered on the sides and you kind of, it kind of just grabs you, it kind of holds you in. So the seat's are really comfortable. Um, there's a lot of manipulation here. I can, I can move the, um, the lower back support up and down, in and out. Um, then of course we have the, the seat extension. All right, so we're gonna do a bit of a hill climb here and uh, see how it does up a hill. A rather steep hill actually, with lots of corners. So now of course the gas engine is gonna come on because I am gonna push it a little bit up this hill. All right, so going up the hill, absolutely no problems, no drama. All is well in the world. This thing is handling beautifully. Doing a full charge on this one from a regular house outlet only takes about six and a half hours. From a level two power outlet, it's only three and a half hours. So, I mean, you really don't need level three fast charging with a plug-in hybrid. It's, it's kind of pointless. All right, so there is a little bit of um, probably fake electric vehicle noise as you start to accelerate. Uh, it stops at about 20 kilometers an hour, so that's pretty normal. That is the uh, sort of pedestrian safety warning system. Uh, it's a VESS, I can't remember, vehicle engine sound something. <laughs> Uh, so that, of course, is on this vehicle as well, because um, when you're in EV mode, otherwise uh, you wouldn't be able to hear it. So going down the same hill now, I'm going to try to use um, the paddles here to kind of keep it geared down. Uh, we're going about 40 kilometers an hour, and I cannot put it any lower than second gear, which I guess makes sense. Now, we do have hill descent assist. Now, the last time that I was testing out a vehicle on this hill, I tried out the hill descent assist and it worked out quite well. So we'll see how it works this time. All right, so I'm gearing up now. I've put it into third, third gear, but the hill descent assist is actually working quite nicely. I'm going about uh, 37. I'm gonna go beyond 40 and see if it still works. No, okay, so it's up to 40 kilometers an hour. The hill descent assist will maintain its descent speed. And the cool thing is, is on this one, of course, it's using regenerative braking to do so. There we go. So it's now slowing down and I can even set the cruise control. I'm going to set it to 39 kilometers an hour. I'm going to disable hill descent assist because I want to see if when the cruise control is set, if it will maintain that hill descent speed. And it does. As a matter of fact, we're going to go up to 50 maintaining at 50 kilometers an hour down a really steep hill. So while there isn't any hill descent assist beyond 40 kilometers an hour, it will actually use regenerative braking to keep you going slower when you set the cruise control at a certain speed. So if I set it to 50 kilometers an hour while going down the hill, it's using full regeneration to try to keep us at that 50K. When the hill becomes too steep for the regenerative braking to maintain the descent speed, it's likely going to kick in the, um, the manual brakes as well, the brake pads, to uh, keep it at that speed as well. And that's one of the benefits of adaptive cruise control, of course, is that not only can you maintain your, your cruising speed uh, when you're on the highway, going uphill, whatever, but also while going downhill so that you don't roll out faster uh, than the speed that you've set it at. So we're, we're going down this very steep hill right now uh, at 51 kilometers an hour. Now, what's really cool is now I've, I've just done a fairly sharp turn and it's slowed down to 37. So it knows because we're going around a sharp, cur sharp curve, it probably should break a little further, uh, a little more, a little harder. And sure enough, it did. It slowed right down to about 37 kilometers an hour. Well, that pretty much uh, covers it for the drive. Let's head back to the dealership and recap. Well, there you have it, guys, the 2022 Santa Fe Plug-in Hybrid Luxury Trim. 
Beautiful vehicle, great drive. Now to recap real quick, um, I've got 24 kilometers of range left. I'm sure you could see that there. 24 kilometers of range left. I've gone 29.7 kilometers. So, I mean, do the math. That's well over 50 kilometers, guys, of electric range. Now, granted, I did use a little bit of gas on that drive. I got 2.7 liters per 100 kilometers, uh, but I was flooring it wherever I was using gas, and I was going up hills as well. So it's not, you know... It's not unheard of to think that you could do 50, 55, maybe even 60 kilometers of just pure EV driving if you take it easy, especially if you don't have a lot of hills in the area. I like this car. I think it's great. It's comfortable. Uh, it's lots of great features, lots of, uh, uh, lots of reasons to look at this vehicle. If you're in the lower half of British Columbia, hit me up uh, with a message on here or come see me at the Chilliwack Merton Hyundai dealership. If you liked this video, if it helped you in some way, please don't forget to, forget to hit like and subscribe. Uh, and if you're subscribed, hit the bell icon for future videos. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.